Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Dom and today we are getting into another episode of building the ultimate Mac mini where we are going to upgrade this Mac mini here with a solid state drive. So we will be replacing the existing one terabyte hard drive with a solid state drive using tools from iFixit and then we have the HyperX solid state drive here from Kingston. If you're going to perform this upgrade yourself, I highly recommend you pick up one of iFixit's magnetic project mats to keep all of your screws here organized. It's very, very helpful in keeping everything in one place so you know how to put it back together and you know where the screws came from. Let's get into the process here, but keep in mind this is an advanced and intermediate tutorial, so I cannot be held responsible for any damage that you might do to your Mac Mini. This will void out your warranty, so keep that in mind. But the first thing we want to do here is go ahead and flip over the Mac Mini and we want to open up the back cover. The easiest way to do this is to take your thumbs or your fingers, place them on those little dots there in the back and then shift it counterclockwise. You will notice that the dot at the very top shifts to the left and that will let you know that you can safely remove the back cover to expose the guts of the Mac Mini. Next we need to make sure we have the proper tools for the job and I have the iFixit 54-bit driver kit right here. This gives us everything we need to open up the Mac Mini here and get everything apart and replace the solid state drive and everything like that. So definitely want to have the proper tools for the job and I'll be sure to link all these tools and the project mat and everything down below in the description for you. So the first thing we want to do here is remove the two T6 Torx screws for the fan right here. So just go ahead and take your T6 Torx bit and put it on your screwdriver and then we can go ahead and remove the screws here to release the fan from the logic board. Also to save time during this video I will be fast forwarding like this through the screw removal process for any screws we have. The next thing we want to do here after we've removed those screws is lift up on the fan from this point right here. Now there's a screw there but the fan just slides over it so we can actually lift up from that point right there and then as you can see the fan begins to wiggle loose. Just be kind of careful with it. Don't pull it up too hard because we do have a cable connecting that fan right there and if you pull it up too hard you will rip that cable right out and you will be in some trouble. So as you can see right here we have the fan connector on the logic board so we want to go ahead and and remove that. Now the easiest way to do this is to just lightly pull up on that cable right there and just lightly pull up on it really really lightly and then it will kind of wiggle loose off of there it'll come off of its clip and then you'll be able to remove the fan completely so just a little tug and then you should be able to remove it just like that very nice and neat and then we can go ahead and take this fan out and move it off to the side. After that, we want to remove the cowling, and that is this big, giant plastic piece right here. Now, it seems kind of intimidating, and it's pretty big, but there's only one screw holding it in, and that is this guy right here. So we are going to continue with our current bit and remove the screw that's holding down that cowling right there, and then we can slowly slide that guy out. Just wiggle it a bit until it pulls out of there. The next thing we want to do is remove the four screws from the antenna plate. This will allow us to remove the antenna plate and get into the hard drive underneath. The first bottom set here, you can use the T8 Torx bit to remove those two screws right there. And then the top set up here, you can use a T8 Torx or a 2.0 millimeter hex. So let's just go ahead and get these unscrewed here very quickly. We will speed through the process. Now when you're unscrewed, don't go lifting up on this antenna plate right away because there is a cable connected. So you want to start by lifting up on the antenna plate from the side where the RAM is located. Slowly lift it up and over the RAM modules there and then pull it outward towards yourself. Now be very, very careful. Like I said, there is a little wire attached and you'll be able to see this right here. It's on the side there, it's attached. That is the antenna wire. And if you rip that, you will not have Wi-Fi on your Mac Mini. So be very, very careful when removing this antenna plate. Once you've moved the antenna plate out of the way, you have to pry up on this little plastic covering right here over the connection point for the Wi-Fi antenna module. Once you've done that, just kind of move it out of the way a little bit so you can see the actual connection point right there pry up on the connection point with a plastic tool as you see me doing once you've actually disconnected the antenna plate and the Wi-Fi antenna module right there you can then go ahead and move that out of the way Moving forward here, we want to disconnect the hard drive connector right here, and this is what actually provides the power and the data transfer capabilities to your hard drive. So just slowly take your plastic tool and lightly pry up on that. It comes off really easy. 
Once you've pried that up, you can just leave it hanging there and then we can move on to the next part which is the IR sensor connector. Now this is easier said than done but slowly lift up on the corner end of the IR sensor connector and you can remove it. I'm using a little pointy plastic tool here from the iFixit toolkit so keep that in mind. That toolkit will provide all the tools that you need to get this job done and once you've lifted it up there, you can just push it out of the way. Next, located at the bottom of the Mac Mini, there's one on the body and two on the logic board. We want to go ahead and remove these screws right here. Be very careful with this and you want to make sure that you're using the T8 Torx bit on the screw right here on the body. So let's go ahead and quickly remove this screw right here. And then we can continue on to the next one here on the logic board which is a T6 Torx bit. Let's get that guy out of there and make sure you're organizing these screws please. It will help you in the long run. And finally we can remove this last one which is another T6 Torx bit right there. So let's just go ahead and hold on to this and get this unscrewed and we are ready to move on. So after all those screws, this is where things get a little bit tricky and we wanna take our logic board removal tool. You can get this from iFixit. I'll link all these things down below in the description for you, but we wanna place this into two little holes on the logic board so that we can, I know this sounds bad, but pry the logic board out so we can access the hard drive better and replace it with a solid state drive. So what you want to do here is there's two little holes on the logic board right here. You want to stick that logic board removal tool into those two holes right there and make sure you get it all the way down to the bottom. Very important here. So go ahead and slowly stick it in there and then we are all set. Just be very careful when you're putting it in there or you can really cause some damage to your logic board. Then we want to slowly pry it, wiggle it a little bit and then pull it towards yourself and it will cause that to spring loose as you can see right there we have a bit of a separation between the Mac Mini and the plastic backing for the ports on the backside of the Mac Mini here. Now once you've done that you can go ahead and remove this logic board removal tool. Now we have two clips on the side of the Mac Mini here underneath that plastic. If you push those clips in you'll be able to pull this loose like that. Now don't pull it out all the way. We just want it out just about that much as you see there on the screen. So you don't want to yank it all the way out or anything like that. And once you have that all pulled out there this gives us better access to the hard drive. So now we can go ahead and easily just lift up on the hard drive and and pull it out and now we are all set to install the solid state drive so I'm gonna go over just uh, actually preparing the solid state drive for install I'm not going to reverse this entire process on video I'm sorry it would just make this video way too long and manageable but if you follow these steps you can basically put those steps in reverse to put everything back together and it will leave you with a Mac mini that has a nice solid state drive inside of it so the first thing you want to do here on the hard drive is we want to remove the cable and that requires removing this little tape right here that is attached to the cable and the covering on the hard drive so once you've done that you can go ahead and slowly pull out the cable right here. The last step here for the hard drive is to remove these two T8 Torx screws right here and then we can go ahead and insert those into the solid state drive for mounting and once you have those removed like I said it just grab your solid state drive and you can go ahead and place all of those in there. But again, I'm not going to go through the entire process of putting this back together. I did create a short little fast forward montage for you if you want to take a look at that. But really, I, I highly recommend that you do some research before getting into this entire tutorial here and doing this for yourself, especially if you're not familiar with taking apart any computers or a Mac mini or anything for that matter. Do your research and make sure that you are 120% confident in this process before just attempting it or else you could very well cause problems for yourself with the Mac mini in the future. Again, I'd like to give a huge shout out to iFixit and Kingston for providing the materials used in this episode of building the ultimate Mac mini. It wouldn't be possible without those two companies so I really appreciate their support. Be sure to check out all the links down below in the description. I will have every single part you need listed down there to complete this tutorial right here. And leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.
video. So we have just about wrapped everything up and we are all set to go. We have a nice Mac Mini with a super fast solid state drive in it. So this Mac Mini now has a very fast 3K solid state drive and also 16 gigabytes of RAM, which we installed in a previous tutorial. I recently also cloned the hard drive and I made a video on it. So if you wanna go ahead and check out that video and the RAM upgrade video, I'll be sure to annotate both of those and leave the links down in the description for you so you can check them out. But this is almost our ultimate Mac mini right here. And it is a very, very powerful machine. Now it's super fast, boots up, lightning speed. It's got a lot of RAM in it. And we have the nice solid state drive, which we just installed. So be sure to let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments section below. And like I said, feel free to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. It really does help out my channel a lot and I appreciate the support. Thanks again for watching everybody. This is Dom and have a great day.